What is going on guys little dog dog here today? I've got an up-to-date quest guide for the brand new quest Azanadra's quest This is a one-to-one -one quest guide you can follow along and Do everything I do as I do it to complete this quest successfully If you've ever used my videos before and you've come back because you enjoyed it be sure to leave a like and subscribe Comment down below if you there was something in this video you liked once you're done or if there's something you think that could have been done better, because I appreciate all the feedback that I get. Now, this is a very long quest with a lot of lore, and during this quest guide, I did not skip any cutscenes, anything like that, just in case you wanted to watch the cutscenes and follow along. I will have timestamps in the description, as well as listed in the video, so you can skip forward if you are someone who does not appreciate the lore. I'll probably explain it anyway. All right, let's get into the requirements. So there is technically only one requirement for this quest that being the vault of shadows mini quest which is a carrot at archaeological mystery that requires 58 archaeology now there are a lot of things in this quest that are not going to make sense if you haven't completed other quests such as the temple knight series and fate of the gods and a bunch of other references that'll probably go over your head or will even be a spoiler so with that in mind uh if you're okay with that feel free to move forward with this quest However, there may be other quests you want to do first for the sake of lore and understanding. The skill requirement for those quests are 58 Agility, 58 Prayer, 70 Divination, and 58 Archaeology. These skills are not boostable. You need them at these actual levels to start and finish this quest. And there's only technically one item which is needed, that being the Slayer Bell. However, there are a variety of items which can be recommended. I'm going to go over just a few of them. That'll make it easier for you. So first off, the archaeology journal is essentially a must-have. It's, it's a recommended item. That's what it says here. But you are not going to want to follow this quest guide if you are not using the archaeology journal for that teleport. You have to go to Karadet a variety of times, like at least six or seven times during this quest, probably more. And the archaeology journal saves so much time getting there rather than some other way to get to the dig site to teleport to Karadet. You're also going to want about 15 food. Now, for me, that was a bit overkill, but I'm combat level 132 and I have 99 constitution. If you are a lower level attempting this quest, that 15 food is probably going to be about the right number for you. There is, uh, there's no combat, but there are occasions during this quest where you are going to take damage. And depending on your skill level, it could be a lot of damage. So make sure you bring some food with you. All right, so to start this doozy of a quest, we're going to go to the castle in Brimhaven and climb up the stairs. So climb up the stairs on the northeast side of the castle and choose the first chat option, yes, indicating that you are here for Azanadra's quest. Talk to Azanadra located on the west wall. Azanadra is going to be like, hey, hey, what up, dude? I need your help. Accept the quest. Thus begins a dialogue full of lore. This begins with a conversation about how this council basically is under Saren's control, even though she doesn't want them to, just simply because of her powers as a god. No one's willing to really go against her. So, you're going to give this, be given this option here, if your audio's off, if you want audio to play. And then there's going to be this cutscene. Uh, basically, it just gives you a background about Azanadra. And, uh, you know what he is what he does i uh i kept this cutscene in the video just if you wanted to watch it however if you skip this cutscene go to 528 in the video to go to where this cutscene ends
All right, now that that's over, Azanandra basically tells you that he needs your help in preventing the end of the world, and that he thinks that Saren is wrong about what the real threat is. He doesn't think it's the adult Elder Gods. He thinks that it's their young who are going to end the world. He firmly believes this and seeks your help in helping him find the eggs. So that's basically what this quest is, is you got to find the eggs of the Elder Gods. Here we go. Uh, well done. Quest complete. Not really. Look at the length of this video. We got a lot. We're going to get really close. We're going to be really good friends. Uh, if you haven't already, subscribe to the channel because you're going to be listening to me for the next hour. All right, teleport to the dig site using the archaeology journal, which I told you you should bring. And then you're going to want to use the table in the archaeology guild to teleport to Karadet. You can use shortcut K in the dig site map to teleport directly to Karadet without having to click on it. From the area you teleport in at Karadet, you're going to want to enter the fortress to the east. This is in the actual dig site. And when you click enter, you're going to want to choose the first option to enter the prison block. Now in the prison block, there is going to be this area here where the Praetorium War Table is housed. Get real familiar with running there because we're going to be here a bunch of times. So, from the entrance, walk south and then east to that war table. It is down on the lower portion, so you will have to go downhill and around. Once you make your way to this war table, you're going to want to begin a dialogue by talking to either Azanadra or Trinidine. It, either way will work. And Azanadra is basically going to give you the rundown of what you need to do. He says that he knows where the last Elder Gods hatched, and that he thinks we could gain some information about seeing how they were kept, and what exactly happened when they were hatched. Maybe even find out how they were hatched, and how they can prevent the end of this world, because it's basically pretty much guaranteed that when the new Elder Gods hatch, that's going to be the end of Gilenor, as it is known. He goes on to tell you that the only way that you can get to his home planet or world i'm not really sure uh, the planet is freneske i think i'm pronouncing that wrong but i don't know how to pronounce it right is by going through the world gate which if you've definitely done all the recommended prerequisite quests you know exactly what that is however if you haven't i'll show you here just in a moment where you can find that he does warn you that it can be a little dangerous so maybe bring food but i've already done that so hopefully you watch the beginning of this video all right, so the World Gate is located just southwest of the Gnome Stronghold, right here in this uh, conveniently placed red box. So we're going to get there by home teleporting to Eagle's Peak. Faster methods are available, however, not as convenient. Sorry, I had my quick teleport on there. It is not for the remainder of the video. So run directly south from the load zone, and you're going to find the World Gate. It's a bit of a hike. So uh, enjoy watching me run there in silence because people complain about the music I used to put in the videos. Once you reach the World Gate, you're going to want to talk to Azanadra. And then choose the first chat option to continue Azanadra's quest. Azanadra will attune the portal to Freneske, his home world. And then you're going to want to go into the portal once this dialogue here is over. So, enter the World Gate. And choose the first chat option, yes, to continue. Once you do that, you're going to be teleported in here, and you're going to want to talk to Azanadra just inside the portal. Azanadra, being the good guy that he is, warns you that this is probably going to be a little bit dangerous, but just goes ahead and teleports ahead because he can't be bothered. So we need to catch up with him. We're going to run east and select jump from ledge on this platform, and then this middle platform as well. This will get you across the chasm. Now we're going to want to run east up this south path. It is the higher path. And avoid the vents that are blowing out steam as they deal 400 damage each time. I didn't.
climb up the cliffside to the east? And then you're going to want to run northeast up this path. And once again, avoiding the pass as they blow steam or hot air or whatever it is. This is a different planet or world. It could be anything. Uh, then you're going to want to climb down the cliff to the south. I ran right past it because I missed it. You get to see that happen. I'm not perfect. From here, run east and then talk to Azanadra. This is a little rest area if you needed to eat up or, you know, rest. Go get yourself some water. You should drink water. Uh, but when you're ready, choose a forest chat option. Let's just keep going. Next, you're going to want to run north, avoiding the vents once again. And I've copy and pasted this text, so I'm not going to tell you they deal 400 damage every time. Next, cross the stepping stones over the lava. And then climb the cliffside. It's basically your only option, but it is to the west. Next, you're going to want to run north, uh, once again avoiding the vents. You'll see often that I don't actually try to avoid the vents because I'm too impatient and I'd rather just tank the 400 damage. Next, you're going to want to wall run over this overhang here and talk to Azanadra again. Choose the fourth chat option, let's just keep going. And now we're going to climb down the cliffside just to the north. Once that animation is completed, run south and then west down this path here. Vents again are your main opponent. Slide down these steps. And now we got a fancy new obstacle here. So we got to run past these shooting flames. Timing is your friend. Run after they both shoot at the same time. Look at that. Now you're going to have two options of paths. The top path is longer and stuff is just getting chucked at you. So I would avoid it. I really don't see why you would not take the bottom path. Um, you're just going to have to avoid these vents here or you can tank it like me because I'm impatient. Next, run east and climb the cliffside. And then walk across this rock formation right here. Talk to Azanadra and select the fourth chat option. Let's just keep going. And now we're going to get really tanky. Run east up this path and dodge the fireball, which is being shot at you right here. Now you're going to want to run past these shooting flames. Uh, timing, once again, is key. This one, not as easy as the first one. Uh, it's a really short window after all three shoot twice. That's pretty much your only opening from what I can tell. And they deal a lot of damage, like a thousand. I just walked through it because I couldn't, I couldn't get it right. I kept hitting the first one. I don't know if there's lag. Just tank it. Once you're through, climb down the drop. And then you're going to want to run east up the path, avoiding the vents. 400 damage. I, pretty, I literally walked into them on this one for no reason. What was I doing? Noob. All right, traverse this rock bridge here. Look at you go. And that's it. Talk to Azanadra. Now you're going to want to enter this opening here. And we got a big room. So you're going to find that Ariane just happens to be here. We're like, oh, what up? Azanadra's like, you know this woman? You're like, yeah, I know this woman. She's like really cool. She's a seer. And she's like, what are you doing with a Majorat? You're like, he's cool. And yeah, that's where it goes. You guys end up helping each other out quite a bit. She's like, I'm here because I saw this place in a vision. I think it has something to do with the potential end of the world. You're like, no way. That's why we're here. We need to investigate these elder god eggs because they're probably the end of the world. Coincidences, you know, you couldn't, you couldn't. You can script this out if you wanted to. She's like, all right, well, we're all here. Let's work together and be friends. Go investigate stuff. So we're going to do that. We're going to run slightly north and then enter the tunnel to the west and follow it all the way to the end.
Once you get to the end of the tunnel, you're going to want to investigate the fragmented sphere. This is an Elder God egg, which has hatched. And Ariane pops in with Azandra. I always say Azandra. I've already I've had to cut that out like four times in the narration here. I don't know why. And they're like, yep, this is definitely an Elder God egg. That's crazy. Explains what happened here and why it looks like uh, why it looks like crap, un uninhabited, in inhospitable, inhabitable. It's one of them words. All right, but we got to do that a bunch of times. So we're gonna go back to the main chamber, and then follow the northernmost tunnel all the way to the end. inspect that sphere which was fragmented and you're going to get a similar cutscene here where Azanadra and Ariane are like that's a egg this is where they hatched yep to be honest I'm usually a pretty big fan of lore this quest a little excessive they poured it on heavy like basically they had a story to tell and we're like alright we'll do it in a quest and we're just going to do it all at once Uh, some people like that. Maybe you love it. This feels like it. I don't know. Just, just like too much. Yeah. Anyways, uh, yeah, that was sphere number two. So we're going to go back to the main chamber and now follow the most northeastern tunnel all the way to the end. Inspect this fragmented sphere, which is a little on fire and surrounded by lava. It's kind of cool. A little aesthetic going. And Ariane makes an observation that, like, they're kind of aligned with the elements and Azandra's like see I did it again it's Azanadra Azanadra's like you can't even begin to understand you, you can't put an elder god in a box these are not your flimsy little gods like Sarah Doman these are real gods and Ariane's like alright back off dude it's enough didn't have to be like that once that's over you're going to want to go back to the main chamber again and follow the southeastern tunnel all the way to the end. Inspect the sphere. Really got to be careful when I pronounce that because that is hard to say. Right now, I bet can't say it five times fast. Inspect the sphere. I, I'm not even going to try because I'm just going to embarrass myself. Anyways, this uh, A inspection gets a little weird. As Azanadra starts talking about how he can like smell magic, like like humans can smell meat. That's just kind of a weird comparison. But I guess you know whatever works. Majorats are their own, doing their own thing. You know, children of Ma or whatever. But once that's over, we got to go to one more chamber. This one is the southwestern tunnel. We're going to follow it all the way to the end. Inspect the sphere. And now we got your final cutscene for like the next five minutes of inspection. I guess not a cutscene, but a dialogue. And they're like, all right, well, uh, I'm glad you ran around this entire tunnel, but we didn't really learn anything. So we got to figure out something else. Right, that's the gist of this one. So you can just go ahead and hold spacebar through all this dialogue because I'm, I'm just explaining it to you. That's the gist. Once you've determined that your work was worthless for the last five minutes, return to the main chamber and speak to Ariane.
Ariane is like, look, all right, there's got to be something we can do here. I did happen to see some little memories floating around in here, you know? So maybe with your excellent divination abilities, you can take this blank observation, load it up with memories from the Elder Gods, and we can determine what happened here. And, you know, it's not like you just need one memory. You need 50 of each. So, what we need to do is collect 50 of the Bic, Wen, Fool, and Joss memory wisps. The wisps can be found in the Southwest Tunnel, Northwest Tunnel, North Tunnel, and the Northeast Tunnel. Now, you won't always get 50 out of each of these fountains, these memory fountains, but they will respawn really, really quickly if you do not get them all. You'll see it on this first one. I actually did not get 50. And I had to do a little cut because I started to run away like, hey, what's going on here? I didn't get 50. Is it broken? And But it respawned really quickly, so I just ran back and gathered it till I had 50. You cannot gather more than 50. Your character will stop and be like, ah, I don't think I need any more of these. I'm going to do the bare minimum. And then you can move on to the next one. Uh, this is a really long... It, this takes a really long time. So I'm not going to talk over the whole thing. Just go for it.
and I'm back. Once you've got 50 of each wisp, you're going to want to return to the main chamber. In your inventory, you're going to want to click on that blink observation to inspect it, and it will be loaded up with all of the memories you just collected. Once you've done that, talk to Azanadra, and Azanadra is like, ah, that didn't work because I am Azanadra and it, it didn't work for me. Ariane's like, give me that thing. And <laughs> it works. Look at that. Azanadra's not that cool. Ariane is. So we get another cutscene here where it basically explains that the Elder God eggs had to be touched by their parents for them to hatch. You can skip this cutscene by going to 2802 in the video. But, once again, I did not, so skip ahead if you would like to skip the cutscene. For those of you that stuck around and are going to watch the cutscene, I'll kind of explain it, even though this is a voiced-over cutscene, and I'm probably talking over your game right now, which can be very annoying. I get it, yeah. You probably wish I'd shut up. Basically, the Elder God eggs had to be touched by their parents for them to hatch. They, the way they gather, they gather energy and anima as they, as they grow. And remain in egg form and then once they're hatched they just suck the life out of everything they destroy the planet they are on and then just move out kind of kind of trashy but yeah i'll let you watch your cutscene. So, cutscene's over, dialogue continues. And Azanadra and Ariane are like, okay, that's cool. Uh, we know what we need to do now. Now we should probably just find these eggs. So, we're going we're gonna to work on doing that. We'll meet you back at Karadat. We're a team now. Once they teleport out, you're going to get greeted by a shadow voice and a light voice. These stick with you now from now on because you're imbued with shadow anima. Uh, you can choose all these chat options if you want to, but we're going to go just move on. So choose the fifth chat option. I've heard enough. I have a world to save. They're like, okay, brag about it, buddy boy. Go do your thing. And the dialogue ends. So now that we're done with this portion of the quest, we need to go to Falador to the White Knight's Castle. This is where the next portion of the quest takes place. Home teleport to Falador. And we need to go get Sarah Domin's help. And Trinidad is going to be here. From the Lodestone, you're going to want to run directly south toward the White Knight's Castle. Fun fact, this run takes approximately 20 seconds without the use of Surge. And then just across the bridge, you're going to find Sir Uptitious standing in the courtyard. So talk to Sir Uptitious. It should, it should automatically begin, but you're going to be walking, so it'll probably close. And Sir Uptitious is like, hey, it's actually Trinidine. Let's get Sarah Dahman's help little Sarah boy. You're like, alright, cool, let's do it. Surreptitious is like, honestly, the crown probably could help us find the Elder Eggs, because it could find Elder Artifacts. So we're going to start doing that. We need to figure out how to talk to Sarah Dahman. Let's go to his throne room. Throne room is on the third floor on the east wing. So go to the east side of the castle and climb up the ladder located just through these two doors.
From here, you're going to want to walk west through the two doors and climb up the staircase. This is going to put you into Sarah Doman's throne room. I'm probably going to just say his name differently every time. And you're going to want to talk to Father Frith because Sarah Doman isn't here. You're like, hey, we need to talk to Sarah Doman. He's like, he's not here. He's off doing God things in another realm, just spreading the good word. And you're like, just tell him that I want to talk to him, which is the third chat option. And Father Frith just roasts you. And he's like, I've never heard of you. Who do you think you are? And he's like, all right, well, I'm the world guardian. So I probably should talk to him because we're trying to keep the world from ending. Father Frith is like, nah, he's got better things to attend to. Get out of here. Okay, we got to figure out a way to, uh, to do this. So you're going to want to go to the ground floor by descending the same staircase and ladder that you climbed up. And because Sir Frith suggested you talk to a Temple Knight, we're going to do just that. You can find Sir Owen in the room just one to the west, and Sir Optitious has already found him and is speaking to him. So talk to Sir Owen. You guys will have a little reunion. And, you know, you see he's got a little bit of corruption on his neck, but he's doing all right. Choose the second chat option. Sir Owen, where you been, man? Like, how, where, where you been? I missed you. Bro? He's like, oh, you know, I've been doing things. Don't worry about it. I'm, I'm just a temple knight. And then you explain to him that we're trying to summon Sarah Dolman because the world could potentially be ending. And because you're a temple knight, thought maybe you'd help. You, carry, you, you know, your name carries some weight. He's like, Father Frith didn't think that the world ending... Was enough of a reason you're like, nah, he's... And then he gets really mad about all the red tape. And I get it. Red tape is annoying. I personally can't stand it when there's red tape at my job. So he's like, we're going to talk to Father Frith right now. So climb back up the ladder. Climb back up the stairs. And then talk to Father Frith. We're going to put our foot down. So you talk to Father Frith. Eh, it doesn't go as expected. He's like, seriously, no, I'm not going to summon Sarah Doman for the world ending. That is not a big enough deal to summon him. He gave us a summoning ritual for emergencies, and this is not an emergency. I, if that's not an emergency, I don't know what an emergency is. But to, apparently Father Frith is like, no, nah, he needs to spread the good word of the gospel of Sarah Doman. And we're going to let him do that. We're not going to bother him with things, even though there is a ritual which he has given us to summon him. Eventually, Sir Owen's like, we're going to go talk to your manager. So what we have to do is go to the west side of the castle and talk to Ceramic Vaz, who is on the west wing of the castle. So we're going to climb back down to the bottom floor by descending the stairs and the ladder. Walk west across the courtyard to the west side of the castle. And then we're going to climb the stairs to the second and the third floor. Once you're on the third floor, you're going to want to talk to Ceramic Vaz, which is just Ceramic Face, and select the first chat option to talk about Azanadra's quest. Now, you've been given the task of convincing Ceramic Vaz uh, that you need help, so tell him that, one, the council is moving too slowly, which is why we're coming here directly. We need Sarah Doman's help. He's like, all right. We will help you summon him, I guess, if you help us outfit our recruits. And you can do that by speaking to Pedomenes, located in the courtyard of the castle. If you do that, then we'll help you out. Which is just annoying. Uh, you get pulled over into the little corner here by Sir Owen, who is just like, as a temple knight, this is dumb. This is really, really dumb. The world is ending, and they're making us do this really dumb stuff. And I, personally, don't stand for it. This is the problem with this low-level nonsense. And you know what, Sir Owen? I agree with you. All right, enough venting. Uh, we're going to climb down the stairs to the courtyard. Make sure you hit that like button. Subscribe. 
I'm going to continue to shill throughout this video because it took me about four days to do. Into the courtyard, and you're going to want to go talk to Padamines, who is the big gold dude with angel wings located in the courtyard. Kind of hard to miss. Choose the first chat option to talk to him about Azanadra's quest. And he's like, okay, yeah, if you're here to help outfit, that's great. We need a lot of armor. You're like, seriously, you guys are like the most popular religion in the world, and these are your knights. You have armor. You have money. Why can't we use it? And he's like, well, we need permission from surviving to use that armor. You're like, what, get them better equipment. And he's like, nah, we kind of need, kind of need permission for that from the big boy who's not here. You're like, oh, all right, face palm. And Sir Owen's like, look, we're we're gonna go talk to him, but uh, I'm getting close to the end of my end of my string here, and and I don't know what it's saying I'm going for. If you know, end of my rope, is that what it is? I don't know. Uh, but he's like, all right, we're going to go talk to Surviving. And if that doesn't work, I'm done. So return to the area where Father Frith is located on the third floor of the east wing of the castle by climbing up the ladder and then up the stairs just to the west. the stairs here you're going to walk just south open the door and talk to surviving surviving is in charge of the armory and uh, you're going to choose the first chat option to ask about Azanadra's quest you let them know that hey we need to outfit those dudes downstairs in the courtyard with some really good armor and then you have it he's like yeah technically we have it but sarah doman needs to be the one to allow me to use it and now we're stuck between a rock and a hard place where we can't get the summoning ritual to summon Sarah Doman without getting them outfitted, but we can't get them outfitted without having Sarah Doman here. And Sir Owen basically flips a lid and is like, you know what? We're done with this. We're done. We're going to turn to a life of thievery to solve our problems. And you know what? That's exactly what we do. We, we you know, we become thieves. And, you know, I am, uh, I respect him for that. I'm okay with being a thief. All right, so to begin our criminal career, who am I kidding? There's no way you have thieving level one. Return to the ground floor. Stairs, ladder, you know. And then talk to Sir Owen, who is just in the room to the west, where he originally was when we first spoke to him. He's like, all right. So there's, it's the ritual documents have to be around here somewhere. How about you look in that cupboard? So uh, open the cupboard and search it, and then select the first chat option to search for ritual documents. It's not in there, and because you've searched one location, he's like, this is stupid, but they just got a safe upstairs. And I bet you, because once again, people are dumb, I can guess the code. Probably that man's birthday. So we're going to climb up the ladder to the second floor. And then enter the room just to the west where the staircase is located. However, this time we're going to walk north toward where the safe is. Sir Owen and Sir Uptitious are going to be right there. Click on the safe to crack it open. They're going to crack it open. And they're going to give you the ritual documents. Now, you don't actually have to read these ritual documents because you're watching a guide. But basically what they tell you is that you need to have a silent bell which is just a Slayer Bell that we're going to cut the clapper out of here in just a moment. And then you need to dip that in holy water, the river salve. And then you just need to ring it and call Sarah Doman's name three times. So you know what we're going to do? Exactly what that document tells us to do. We're going to make a silent bell, bless it in the river salve below Paterdamas, and we're going to ring it three times while calling Sarah Doman's name. I don't know why I was able to summarize that so much better for you than this uh, quest was, but hey, gotta have filler, right? So once that's done, the first thing we're going to do is make our Slayer Bell into a Silent Bell. So right-click the Slayer Bell and select Cut Clapper. You'll turn it into a Silent Bell, and now we need to go to Paterdamas which is located just to the west of Canifis, just to the east of the lumberyard. 
Um, I home teleported to Varrock. In thinking about it, it's probably faster to have home teleported to Canifis. So if you wanted to do that, it, it honestly probably will be faster. However, I home teleport to Varrock. So if you want to follow along with me exactly, uh, you can do that as well. From the Varrock Lodestone, you're going to want to run east and then north up toward the lake Lumberyard. And then east once again towards Paterdamas. Bit of a walk. I have nothing to say. So I'll see you there. So once you've reached Paterdamas, you don't want to go inside the actual church. You want to run north into the cemetery and then enter the mausoleum on the north side of the cemetery to get below the church. Now we're going to want to run to the well, which is in the center of the mausoleum. You do have to open this gate here. Hopefully you can figure that out without me telling you you have to do it. And then once you get to the well, you're going to want to use the cut slayer bell or silent bell on the well to bless it. Now we need to go back to Falador, to the White Knight's Castle. So home teleport to Falador. And then from the Lodestone, you're going to want to do that 20 second run right back to the White Knight's Castle. Once you get back, you're going to want to return to the third floor of the east wing of the castle where Father Frith is located. That's up the ladder and up the stairs if you forgot. And then once you're in the room, you're going to want to walk to the center, just in front of the throne, and ring the silent bell in your inventory three times, choosing the first chat option to call out to Sarah Doman each time. Once you've done this, Sarah Doman will be summoned, and you're in for another big batch of lore. So, Sarah Doman's back, and Father Frith is like, I'm so sorry, they summoned you. And he's like, uh, uh whatever, why? Choose a third chat option. The world is in danger. I feel like that's a pretty good reason to summon them back. So you explain that uh, the elder eggs are soon to hatch and will end the world when they do. And Father Frith is like, I told him not to. Choose the first chat option. We are concerned about Saren. He's like, ah, yep, me too. I'm also concerned because she's got that way about her. You tell him that you're working with Oz and Adra, and you tell him that we need to find the eggs. And when he asks you what the plan is, you want to wait to tell him we need his crown last, because that's uh, the most suspicious statement. Say, uh, we need your crown. First chat option. And he's like, yeah, that makes sense, because my crown can seek Elder God artifacts, but I've already tried it. I know that the eggs are a danger to our world. But my crown does not help find the eggs. Father Frith 
is like I, I told him not to I told him not to do it. And he's like, dude, the one reason I gave you the ritual is to summon me back for situations like this. You're terrible. Be better at what you do because I can't stand you. Not actually, but that's a pretty good summation, and I think that's how they meant to portray it. So that's why I say that. Anyways, this uh, dialogue continues on for a while, and he's like, I appreciate the work that you're doing. You really, uh, you really should keep doing it. I hope you find the elder eggs, but I can't help you. You can hold spacebar through the rest of the dialogue. It's irrelevant. Or you can click through it because I probably did miss something. See you when I need to say something next. Okay, that's done. We need to go to Caradette. So we're going to teleport using the archaeology journal. And then use the archaeology map to teleport to Caradette. Choose the Caradette site. And now enter the fortress and the dig site to the east. And choose the first head option to travel to the prison block. Alright, once you're in, uh, you need to go to the south so you can talk to Azanadra, who is located at the war table. For starters, when you talk to Azanadra, Ariane's going to pop in because they're already having a conversation. Um, but eventually it's going to get to the point where he's like, okay, so I am one of like, the main dudes supporting Zeros, and you brought one of the main dudes supporting the, the Ceridominus here. What the heck? Not appreciative of it. Uh, you choose the second chat option. He wants to help. And for some reason, that's simply enough to convince Azanadra that you know he's a cool dude. He can help out. So you guys get to devising a plan about how you are going to find the Elder God eggs, which are for sure already on Gilanor. But where are they? Who knows? So they propose three options. The first one, the Hall of Memories. Guthix, man knew a lot. That's where his memories are stored. So if you want to find out what he knew, probably go there. The other one is the Wizard's Tower. Wizard's Tower has been around for forever. And they've got a huge library of floating bookshelves where you can probably find some sort of documentation potentially referencing the elder god eggs lastly they're like tisar city these are the creatures that literally built this planet formed this planet created by the elder gods so they've got to know where they're at they probably built the place where they're stored you're like yeah all right and then as an Azanadra is going to tell you, all right, Trinidine, you're going to go with him, and you guys are going to figure this out. Get her done. So once that dialogue's over, where we're going to start is the Hall of Memories at the Memorial to Gothics. To get there, we're going to home teleport to Eagle's Peak. And once you've arrived, you're going to want to run just northwest toward the Memorial to Guthics. This is approximately a 30 second run. Fun facts.
Once you've arrived at the memorial, talk to Trinidine, who's located just outside the pool here. Trinidine's going to be like, all right, cool, you've made it. We should probably go in and just get to work. Sounds like a good idea, right? So enter the pool and select the first chat option, yes, to enter uh, through Azandra's quest. I said it again, Azandra. Azandra. When you go in, the archivist is going to be like, that man's not allowed here. You are, but we're going into override. So you need to confuse him. Choose a second chat option. This statement is a lie. Throws the archivist off just for just for a little bit, you know. But he gets back to his kill you ways. Choose a second chat option again. If I can hold, then you can hold. Uh, diamond hands, if you know what I'm saying. And eventually you're going to break him. He's like, okay, what? Hang on. I, what's happening here? And then uh, you convince the archivist to dump his memory. Now, that's unfortunate because we kind of need his memory. So once this dialogue here is over, you need to do some divination stuff and collect memories, which have conveniently appeared around the room. So you want to gather these six archivist memories appeared around the room. They're floating around these little purple balls. You do just have to click on them and then it's an easy collect. Once all six have been collected, you're going to want to return to the archivist. Talk to it. And then you're going to like give the memories back and then suggest that, you know, maybe Trinidine be added as an exception. Uh, choose a third chat option. What can you tell me about Sliske? Well, the archivist reboots. You have to make small talk with Trinidine to pass the time. He tells you a little bit about Sliske and how they're like, how Sliske's dead and how they weren't really alike. Sliske was kind of like a trickster and didn't really know when to when to stop the pranks because he always took them too far. And once you're done with that dialogue option, you're going to follow it up with one, did you ever meet Guthix? He tells you that he did meet Guthix. Basically how that goes. And then once this dialogue here is over, the archivist is going to be kind of rebooted, but you're going to have to gather some memories again. So once you've broken the archivist again, he's going to spit out six restricted memories. They've appeared around the room. This time, instead of being purple, they are white. Once you've collected all six archivist memories, you're going to want to go to the plinths on the north side of the room and place a memory on each plinth. They are three in the northwest side and three on the northeast side. Once you've placed that sixth memory, you're going to want to search the memory bud in the center of the room, and this is going to get you a restricted Ingram. Uh, this is what we're going to use to access Guthix's memories outside of the hall. So we want to exit the hall of memories by using the pool just to the south where we entered. Choose the first chat option to exit. And then just to the west, you're going to want to use the restricted engram on the fountain of energy. This is going to spawn a huge dialogue tree where Guthix explains that he knows that his time is limited and that he needs to find somebody, a human likely, who can take over for him. He was aware of the threat of the Elder Gods uh, planned his own death, but he has 
at least he didn't mention where the eggs are located, and this is a really long dialogue tree to explain that. See you when it's over. So once that dialogue tree is over, you realize it was a waste of time. It's time to go to the next location, which is the Wizard's Tower. We're going to get to the Wizard's Tower by home teleporting to Draenor Village. And then from the Lodestone... You're just going to run south directly to the Wizard's Tower. This one's about a 40 second run. You're learning so much. Just inside the Wizard's Tower, there's going to be Wizard Trindy at the door. This is Wizard Trinidine, and she is not being allowed in. So, choose the first chat option looking good, and then you'll be talking to the director of, I guess the door handler of the Wizard's Tower, who's like, I don't know who this is, I don't want to let them in. But you, you vouch, because Trinidine's been pretty cool and is helping you out. You're like, she's my friend, we're just here to do some research, uh, and then we'll leave. So you guys are eventually allowed in, but she's like, I'm keeping an eye on you. And if anything comes up missing, it's on you, you know, because you're vouching for Wizard Trindy here. Once you are allowed in, uh, all you have to do is search some bookcases. Wizard Trindy is going to take the bookcases on the east side of the Wizard's Tower. So you need to search the four bookcases on the west side of the Wizard's Tower. It's just these ones that are floating around. There will be a little dialogue for each one. You can just click off that quickly and go to the next one. Once you've searched all the bookcases and found nothing of interest, talk to Wizard Trindy who is near the East bookcases. Wizard Trindy lets you know that, you know, there really wasn't anything good here. I got nothing. Let's move on to our last possible lead, which is in the Tazhar City. Right here in the red box. Uh, the volcano on Karamja. That's where we're going. So, home teleport to Brimhaven.
And then from the Brimhaven Lodestone, you're going to want to run northeast to the Brimhaven Gate, where it is separated from Karamja. Or I guess Musa Point. Yeah, Musa Point. You're going to exit through the gate and then run to the east. You are going to have to go a little south around the lava here, but it is to the east where the entrance is. And then just outside the entrance, you're going to find Trinidine. So talk to Trinidine before you go in. Trinidine is going to be like, I had never been here before. This place is uh, rather cool. The Tazar separated from the Takar. You know, they know what they're doing. So, once this dialogue's over, enter the Tazar city through this cool-looking entrance here. And then just inside, you'll find that Trinidine has been stopped by a Tazar, Ga'al. We're going to want to talk to Ga'al to, you know, vouch for Trinidine once again. Say they're cool, you know. They're just here helping me out. And Ga'al's like, you know, you're cool, so if you say Trinidine's cool... I guess Trinidine is cool. Now, I'm actually getting ahead of myself here because, you know, this hasn't actually happened in the conversation yet as I'm saying it. So, spoiler alert. But we're going to vouch for Trinidine here in just a moment. Uh, you're going to get a chat option. And when you get that chat option, choose this is Trinidine. She's helping me with my search. The second chat option. Gaal's like, okay, since you say so, we will meet you in the main chamber of the city here to discuss further. So, uh, the main plaza of the city is located just to the north of the entrance in the red box there. So, run north to the main plaza. And once you get there, you're going to want to talk to Trinidine. You're going to see that uh, Takar Hawk just happens to be here right now, who is letting the Tazar know that the Master has returned, the Elder God, and that they need to be ready when they come back. Now, the Tazar are like, I don't know, we're kind of rebels here. But eventually, all of them but one... I'm pretty sure I remember are like, you know, we were only rebelling while waiting for the master to come back. Master's back now, so we should probably should probably do what we're made to do, you know. Trinidad is eventually like, all right, well, I've seen enough of this. I'm going to go do some research in the library. How about you speak to Big Purple Boy and then come meet me there when we're done? So we're going to talk to Purple Boy, Takar Hawk. And what this dialogue here boils down to is that we're just going to ask Takar Hawk, who, you know, if he knows where the eggs are located, he says yes. It's so cool. That's a really good, really good start. So we ask, will you tell us? And it is a resounding no. We are not worthy to know where they are located. So, yeah. Oof. Once that dialogue's over, we need to go meet Trinidine in the library. The library is located just to the west of the main plaza, a little northwest. So we're going to run west to the library. Once we're in the library, you're going to want to enter via the entrance on the west wall. I ran north here. So I got a little distracted, but no way to cut that out cleanly, so it stayed in. 
once in the library, you're going to want to run south and speak to Trinidine. Trinidine, Trinidine. Oh, this is a long video. Talk to Trinidine. And they're like, yeah, there's probably a lot of information here. But, uh, it's all in, like, these weird orb things. And it's going to take a really, really long time to figure out, you know, like, what these say. He eventually determines that it's really not worth his time and that you guys should probably pursue other avenues because the world might just be gone by the time you actually figure out what these say because it's it's getting to be that time. So we're going to teleport once again using the archaeology journal to go back to the dig site. From the archaeology guild, we're going to teleport to Karadat using the archaeology map. That's once again shortcut K on your keyboard. Fast travel there. And then enter the fortress and select the first chat option, prison block. Now talk to Azanadra at the war table once again. And this is the point where we get to find out where literally none of us had success in discovering where they're located. Ariane is knocked out from eating something she probably shouldn't have eaten. No, she absorbed some energy or something. Um, she wakes up at, during this dialogue and reveals that she has seen where the eggs are located. So, you know, that worked out really well. She saw it in a dream. You notice that Sir Owen is also missing, but kind of falls to the wayside because you guys need to f go find the eggs so that you know where they're at, you know? Turns out she says they're at the heart, but you're like, nah, we've been there before. She's not, no, she's swearing by it. So we're going to go to the heart located just west of Narda. How I got there is teleporting to the bandit camp. If you haven't done desert treasure to unlock this teleport, that sucks. You should really do desert treasure. It's worth doing and you're missing out by not doing it. If you're doing this quest before Desert Treasure, I, I, wrong order. So from the Lodestone, we're going to run southeast across the river to the heart. This is approximately a minute long walk. There are faster ways to get to Narda. However, this is the one most easily accessible for everybody. Once at the heart, you're going to want to talk to Azanadra, who's located standing around on the southwest side. Talk to Azanadra, and they're like, all right, it's time to go in. Something feels different here. I believe the bosses has moved out because something's going down. So enter the heart and select the first chat option, yes. And when you get there, you're going to see that Hellweir is here just protecting stuff. Hellweir's like, we're the last one. We're just left here to defend. And you're not going to get by. Fortunately for you, though, Grigorovic turns up. The Zerosian boss. Now, just what are the odds of that when you're helping out Azanadra, a Zeros follower, that Grigorovic turns up? And just is like about to just, it just really, I apologize for the stuttering, 
just make it how we are mad. And eventually chases how we are off so you guys can get down to business to defeat the Elder Gods. After that, you're going to get this automatically continuing dialogue between Azanadra and Ariane. And Ariane is like, hey, look, I was right. There's this cool little hidden trap door, which was not animated in. We're just going to all of a sudden appear down in this little hole below where we're at right now. Here we are. So uh, what we need to do now is inspect the eggs of the Elder Gods because we found them. So run north down the tunnel, directly to the north, and observe Juan's egg. Now, in doing this, Ariane is like, wow, they are full of power. They are probably not ready to hatch, but if there were another instance where a bunch of anima was released, like what happened during Desperate Measures, and uh, uh, they probably would hatch and destroy the world. So now we need to inspect the other two. We're going to do the one in the northeast tunnel first. Now we're going to observe Fool's Egg here. And then next, we're going to observe the last egg, which is down the northwest tunnel. So observe Bix's egg. Azanadra and Ariane will teleport. And Azanadra decides that when he's done here, he needs to go report his findings back to Zeros. And he's acting really, really strange. And, you know, he's a Zerosian and, and a, a Majra. And it's, it's, you know, unfathomable that he would possibly be doing something which was untrustworthy. But eventually he's going to teleport out. And leave you and Ariane there alone in the heart. Oh, but he's also like, yeah, we know they're here. Nothing's going to happen. At least we know where they're at, right? We can we can figure something out in the future. Then he teleports out. So, talk to Ariane. And she's like, okay, that was weird. Something's probably going on here, which shouldn't have been happening. And you probably should figure out what happened. A good place to start in finding out what happened would be by going to Caradet and investigating there. The Shadow Voice and the Light Voice also discuss with you that there's Erosians and Majorats and, and they really shouldn't be trusted. So you probably had the wool pulled over your eyes here. So we're going to go investigate how we were betrayed. And we're going to do that by teleporting using the archaeology log and then making our way over to Caradet. Once at the dig site, use the archaeology map and teleport to Karadat. Now we're going to want to enter the fortress again. However, this time we want to select the first chat option, yes, to continue Oz and Adra's quest. Now things are different in here now. Uh, you're going to want to go to the war table, and upon arriving at the war table, you'll see that it seems abandoned. When you get to the war table, there should be a dialogue that pops up. If it pops up and then closes out, just exit the room and re-enter. I had to do that. And the shadow voice and the light voice basically tell you that there are definitely traces of shadow magic from Trimadine still remaining, 
and that we may need to access the Shadow Realm to be able to see what happened. Uh, if we can access Trinidine's memories, we should be able to you know, get a full story and, and get, figure out what they were trying to do. So, click Charge on the pylon just to the south. It's the big thing in the middle of the room. And you're going to be imbued with Shadow Magic. Now what we need to do is stand next to four Shadow Anchors located around the room. We're going to start with the one on the southwest and then move to the one just north of that. Then the one on the southeast and then the one on the southeast corner. I will be doing that so you can follow along. There are some little obstacles you have to climb over to get to the one on the southwest. However, the rest are easily accessible. So there's going to be a crumpled wall just inside this area here to climb over. Uh, once you stand near the shadow anchor, you'll get a confirmation indicating that like fr from the voices, the light and shadow voices, like that's one, um, that's two, or, you know, a couple more. So it says three more. Uh, if you don't get that, try walking away or going back into the uh, war table room because you may not have completed the dialogue. Once you've stood next to all four, I'll come back to talk to you. Right, so once you've stood next to all four, there's going to be a Trinidine Wisp, which appears near the charge pylon in the center of the room outside the war table. You need to gather 50 Trinidine Wisps so you can look into his memory. Once you've gathered all 50, inspect the blank observation in your inventory. If you've banked it, you will need it. Sorry that I'm just telling you that now. Um, but you're going to have access to Trinidine's memory. And what you discover is that their whole thing they were trying to do was not save the world. They were trying to steal Saradoman's crown because they believe it actually belongs to Zeros. It is a heist 5,000 years in the making. And the only thing that we have done is unlocked him by doing the... Uh, mini quest required for this quest and then helping him get access to Saradoman. So we need to right the wrongs that have occurred and find out exactly what he was doing for sure. And we're going to do that by going back to the wizard's tower first. So home teleport to Draenor. From the lodestone, you're going to run south to the wizard tower. Enter the wizard tower and you're going to immediately be confronted by the gatekeeper who, as I told you earlier, really warned you about, you know, if you're going to vouch for your friend, you need to make sure they're not taking anything. She explains to you that I can't believe you've even come back because something was taken and it was a book having to do with Elder God artifacts, specifically the one pertaining to Sarah Doman's crown. So you explain to her that, you know, honestly... 
I, uh, I, I was deceived as well. And then I'm sorry, and I'm going to do my best to get that book back for you. That's why I returned, because I'm just, just now figuring out that Tritidine, kind of a piece of crap. Once you're done at the Wizard's Tower, it's time to move on and see what else Trinidine did. And we're going to go to the Tazar City next to figure out what was, what was taken from there. So home teleport to Brimhaven. And then it's northeast of the volcano through Brimhaven. This time you're just going to go right into the Tsar City. And then run north to the main plaza. Once you get into the main plaza, you're going to want to talk to Gaal. And when you ask Gaal what Trinidine was actually asking about, he'll explain to you that he was asking about the Elder Artifacts, particularly the Locator, which is used to find uh, other Elder Artifacts. This whole situation is starting to look really bad, but we have one more location to go to, which is the Hall of Memories at the Memorial to Guthix. To get there, we're going to home teleport to Eagle's Peak. And from the Lodestone, we're going to run northwest right to the memorial to Gothics. Once you're at the memorial, you're going to want to enter the pool to go into the Hall of Memories. Select the first chat option, yes, to continue Oz and Adra's quest. Once inside, talk to the Archivist. And the Archivist is going to explain to you that Tritidine accessed a memory known as the Elder Crown, and then subsequently erased the memory called the Elder Crown. It can only be assumed that this memory relates to Sarah Doman's crown. Once you've investigated all the places you went with Trinidine, we're going to want to go back to the heart to speak to Ariane. So, from here, you're going to home teleport to the bandit camp. And then run southeast across the river all the way to the heart.
Once you're here, this time you can simply enter the heart and then choose the first chat option, yes, to continue Azanadra's quest. This will not place you in the main heart. It will take you right down to where the elder eggs are kept. And then you're going to talk to Ariane. Now, when speaking to Ariane, you're going to tell her that you found out about this betrayal by using the observation. She tells you that if you have some of Trinidine's memories stored in that observation, she should likely be able to access more given that she's a seer. So, when you give her this observation, you're going to find out what actually happened to Sir Owen. And uh, that the man that he reports to, the leader of the Temple Knights who had never been seen, is actually a Zerosian demon. Now this occurs over like a four minute long cutscene. Um, I am not going to talk over this cutscene. It is not skippable, but you can just hold spacebar. This cutscene ends at 1.30 in this video. If you did just want to pause and then skip ahead. Otherwise, uh, follow along and, and read. Yeah. After that cutscene ends, Ariane and you just kind of have a little moment together of realization. And then you're going to choose the first chat option, whatever they're planning. It can't be good. So obviously, we need to go warn Sarah Doman at the White Knight's Castle of the impending heist. We're going to home teleport to Falador. And then from the lodestone, run south to the castle.
Now, just at the other end of the bridge here, you're going to find Ariane. Talk to Ariane, and it is going to be in a cutscene. Now, this cutscene cannot be skipped like the previous one could ahead in the video because there are dialogue options you need to select. It's going to begin with Ceramic Vars and Ceradomen teleporting in to begin the blessing of the new recruits and the troops. Blessing their armor, you know, doing all that religious stuff. And you're presented with the option of whether to interrupt and warn Ceradomen or to just let it play out and see what happens. Now, I thought it was a better idea to interrupt. So I chose the first shed option, interrupt the ritual and warn Ceradomen of the Zerosian plot. When I do that, you're going to see that Azanadra actually is in the crowd and becomes Azanadra. There's going to be a bunch of other White Knight recruits that turn into Zerosian recruits. And Zeros himself is going to appear as well. I stand corrected. I thought Azanadra was one of the recruits. He just teleported in. I look dumb, but I'm leaving it in. We all make mistakes. I'm only human. Sarah Doman's like, you'll never take my crown. You're just Zerosians. But it turns out that uh, Zerosians kind of got a little bit going for him. Because Zeros teleports in. And, spoiler alert, takes the crown. Literally just teleports it off this man's head. Now, Sarah Doman doesn't do anything about it. Which kind of proves that Zeros is the better god. But I will, you know, leave that up to you. If you feel that is an appropriate statement. And yeah, that's basically the entirety of this, this part of the cutscene. Once they all teleport away, Sir Owen and Sir McVars are like, oh, we messed up. We messed up. Sir McVars even is offering to like, take his own life. But Sir Owen's like, you don't got to do that, dog. I shouldn't have let that happen. Eventually, Sarah Doman's going to be like, all right, you were here with him. You trusted him. Why did you even summon me back for my crown to be stolen? You're going to choose the second chat option. They deceived me as well. And then we're going to we're going to go talk to Azanadra and confront him for kind of being awful. As we should have expected. So once the cutscene's over. Teleport using the Archaeology Journal. We're going to teleport to Caradet by using the Archaeology Map in the Guild. And then we're going to enter the Fortress and select the first chat option, Yes. From here, you're going to want to run to the war table and talk to Azanadra. So talk to Azanadra and you will be greeted by a conversation ongoing between Zeros, Azanadra, and Trinidine. Once Zeros teleports away, Azanadra will speak with you and let you know that, hey, we kind of manipulated you, and we're kind of bad people, and that we're going to attack something, like a monolith of some sort, and that the next time we'll meet, we'll probably be enemies. 
Choose a second chat option one of these days. I'm going to see this coming. Trinidine, done believe you. Because, let's be honest, how many times has this kind of thing happened in this game? And we never learn. Majorats are not our friends. So, Azanadra teleports away. Trinidine's like, oh yeah, I'll release Sir Owen. He teleports away. And then it's just you and Ariane left at the table. She declines to join the Zerosians because she's too cool for that. And then says, you probably shouldn't go back to the Elder Halls because, you know, that's that's going to be pretty bad. She's like, I'm going to get a team together to research the eggs, but I got a feeling this isn't over. And that's going to be quest complete. You have made your way through it. Would you just look at that? Um, so... If you appreciated this video or if this helped you get the quest done in, in any way that's better than like the wiki possibly could have, please subscribe, leave a like, tell your friends. I put a lot of work into these videos, especially these long ones. Um, so it, if you could show your support, I would really appreciate it and it give me a lot of effort to keep going. Anyways, thank you so much for watching. Have a great day.